Okay, in this lecture we're going to cover some guidelines on how to do the paper reviews. As you know, 740 will be a heavily paper review oriented course. You will read lots of papers and we'll ask you questions. We'll have discussion on many different papers. And for some of the papers, we'll ask you to provide paper reviews on, on the online paper uh, review website. So I'll cover some of the basics on how to do these. So here is an outline of a good summary that we're expecting from you. First, uh, the, a good review will, will start with a brief summary of the paper. Basically, what is the problem the paper is trying to solve? What are the key ideas of the paper? What are the key insights that are provided in the paper? And what is the key contribution to the literature at the time the paper was written? And what are the most important things you take out from it? This is kind of like a brief summary of the problem, goal, ideas, contribution, and the most important things that you take out of the paper. Then the second part of the review is the strengths of the paper. And I would like you to focus on the most important ones. Uh, it's always important to uh, order the strengths from the biggest strengths to the smaller strengths. And this is usually, uh, it could be a bullet point list uh, of uh, strengths in the paper. Maybe there are two or three strengths in the paper that you want to single out. Uh, and the key question to look at here is, does the paper solve the problem well? What is so strong about it? Uh, for example, for a paper, it could be the insight that could be very strong. It could be a very simple solution to a very difficult problem. Uh, it could be the elegance of the algorithm that solves the problem. It could be the uh, uh, the, uh, the effectiveness of the result. But usually I would like you to focus on the strengths of the mechanism itself uh, rather than uh, the evaluation because sometimes evaluations could potentially be misleading uh, because uh, the evaluations may be uh, on, uh, uh, done by the authors on their own system whereas some, on some other system the, uh, the, the solution may not work as well. But it's really the inside of the solution uh, that, makes, uh, that usually makes uh, a paper strong. The third uh, part of the review is actually the weaknesses of the paper. And again, I would like you to focus on the most important weaknesses first and then go down on the list. This is where you should actually think very critically. Strengths are easier to find because usually the authors will try to tell you what the strengths are. But weaknesses, authors may not uh, want to tell you the weaknesses are for many different reasons. Part of the reason could be they could be working on it and they want to uh, generate the next big thing uh, before you do, potentially. So this is where you should really think critically. Every paper, an idea, has a weakness. It's difficult to uh, publish a paper that doesn't have any weakness. This doesn't mean that the paper, the published article, is necessarily bad. It means that there is room for improvement and there is room for future research that can accomplish this improvement. So actually, finding out the weaknesses of the paper in a constructive and critical way can enable uh, both you and the authors who could potentially receive this review, in this case they're not going to receive this review, but uh, to, uh, to, to actually perform even better research going into the future. So this is actually where you can generate good ideas. But I'd like you to focus on uh, these weaknesses with two or three blue points. The fourth part of the review, can you do much better? Why don't you present your thoughts and ideas to us in your review? Uh, maybe there's a better solution that you came up with after reading the paper. That would be good to know. And the fifth part of the review, I would like you to uh, I would like to know what have you learned, enjoyed, or disliked in the paper. This is more qualitative, of course, and why. It'd be uh, it'd be good to tell uh, because this will this could potentially determine your direction in the research project that you're taking. Uh, the review should be short and concise. It should be half a page or shorter. You could certainly write wrong, but it's going to be difficult to read the longer reviews. Uh, and uh, I would like you to. Uh, try, to, try to keep it uh, within half a page or maybe uh, 0.75 pages. Uh, several uh, uh, more, more, more advice points. When, when doing the reviews, uh, be very critical. Being very critical in a constructive way uh, is very good because that, then you can find uh, ways of improving uh, the, the existing uh, designs. Always think about better ways of solving the problem or related problems. Uh, but also uh, focus on the positive parts of the paper as well. Every paper has positive parts and negative parts, and I would like you to be balanced in this. But uh, weaknesses you need to be critical to figure out. Do the background reading, and this is actually important because if you don't necessarily understand a paper, uh, you can go, go to the references and do the background reading and understand it much better. And within that context, 
you can have a deep, a deeper appreciation of the paper. And reviewing a paper or talk is actually the best way of learning about a research problem or topic, as long as you do it rigorously. And uh, think about forming a literature survey topic or a research proposal while you're re re reading a paper. If there's a topic that actually excites you that's very interesting, uh, you might want to dig deeper and try to form your research proposal along these ways. And we'll try to assign you papers that will uh, give you a lot of different directions and potentially that will make uh, that, that are on hot topics that are on important topics uh, that uh, that uh, that have a lot of potential research projects and if you think toward this way how can I do better what can I improve how can I solve the problem differently then you can perhaps uh, form your research proposal around the topics uh, of this uh, paper by the way uh, you could you could always question the problem that's uh, solved in the paper as well and that could go into the weakness of the paper if you do not think the problem is important uh, perhaps you can articulate why that is the case now uh, be, uh, I, having said that I would I would suggest you to be careful about that because the problem if you look at one point of view may not be important but put in a very different context may, which may uh, which you may not be thinking about may be an important problem so there are usually solutions that uh, that fit well some problems uh, in domains that you may not be thinking about okay uh, one uh, reading that I will recommend to you on refereeing computer systems papers is The Task of the Referee, written by A.J. Smith in IEEE Computer 1990. This provides an idea of the publication process and what should be done by different parties in the publication process. Even though it's an old paper, it still uh, uh, relatively reasonably represents how publications are done in computer science at least. Uh, this provides guidance on how to perform technical reviews as well. So I will uh, strongly recommend you uh, to read that paper. And perhaps this could be a, uh, uh, this could be a reading assignment. Uh, also see uh, some of these other references that I provide uh, below. In fact, the, the Levin and Riddell paper uh, in uh, operating systems research, uh, I, I believe operating system reviews, how and how not to write a good systems paper is a good paper that discusses uh, the good aspects of a systems paper and bad aspects of a systems paper. Levin and Erdell were the program chairs uh, of, I believe, uh, the SOSP symposium in 1982. And based on the, uh, based on the uh, papers, lots of papers they received, they've come up with a set of guidelines on what constitutes a good systems paper. There are other publications around, and Jones' uh, How to Write a Great Research Paper talks about some of them, as well as it's a good presentation on uh, that discusses how to write, uh, how, how to how to uh, articulate your idea as well. So these will be useful for you in preparing uh, your research career as well as preparing your re report uh, in the um, uh, in this class. Uh, a little bit on literature survey. You will be doing literature surveys in this course as part of your research project. There will be more information to come, but in the meantime, I would suggest that you read a lot of papers, find focus problem areas to survey papers on. And we will provide a list of project ideas and papers associated with them to guide you. And a good way of finding topics to survey or to do projects on is to examine the provided project ideas and papers that we will provide. And also read the assigned papers in the lectures. Some of these will be optional. Some of these will be required. If you do more reading, you'll find uh, better chances of doing a stronger project. And examining papers from recent conferences like ISCA, MICRO, HPC, ASPLOS, and other systems conferences would help you quite a bit uh, in uh, finding a good research project. And I will have a separate video, uh, video that actually discusses uh, uh, the, the literature survey as well as the project assignment. And the project assignment video can help you in this regard. That's all I have on this video. Good luck on the paper reviews. And I look forward to reading uh, very crisp, very good, very critical, and very articulate reviews from all of you. Thank you.